message today is life storm. Amen. Amen. And our scripture uh, we're going to go to is Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. We're going to start there. Amen. Amen. Can y'all hear me fine? Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 23. And it reads as follows. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What man of a man is this, that even the winds and the seas obey him? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So let's look at this for a second, right? So we had a couple things going on in this boat, right? One, there was a storm, right? There were the waves crashing about the boat, right? We see that. There was a storm, amen? amen. Second, his disciples was panicked. They was in panic mode. Right? They were scared, freaking out, right? Third, Jesus was in the boat with them, but sleep. Amen? He was there with them. Sleep, right? He was beyond chill. He was asleep. Amen? Amen? So, this is the thing. Jesus could sleep in the middle of a storm because he knew exactly who he was. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen? His disciples could not sleep because at that particular time, they didn't know exactly who Jesus was. Amen? And that's the difference. When you know who this Jesus we're talking about, what we sing about, we worship and praise, when you know who this Jesus is, you can have that type of inner peace where you can sleep in the middle of the storm. Amen? But you got to know who he is first, right? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Another thing, too. Um, we have to, Sometimes we make the mistake, and Pastor Kimbrough touched on it in Bible study. Sometimes we make the, the mistake of when we're witnessing the people or we're sharing the gospel with people, that we may give them the impression that when they become saved, that the storms will automatically cease right. upon right. salvation, right? <laughs> now, sometimes people do it out of ignorance. Some people, some people are just excited about getting people to come to Jesus, right? But they give them this impression that's not a, uh, not a true narrative. Amen? Amen? So, but three things happen when we do that, though. Three possible things can happen when we do that. So, people are thinking, like, okay, they get saved, storms hit, they think, whoa. I must not be doing this thing right, mm -hmm. right? He told me it was always going to be gravy and peace, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see all that, right? Mm -hmm. So I must not be doing it right. Second thing that happened is they say, well, somebody lied to me about this life, right? right. Mm -hmm. Because he told me once I came to Jesus, it was, going, I, it was never going to have another storm in my life, right? right? So he think, one, I must be doing something wrong, two, he lied to me about this life, and three is the most dangerous one to me, is that this guy he told me about is not strong enough to keep me from the storm. Right? So that's the most dangerous thing we can do. So we have to be careful when we're ministering to people, when we're witnessing to people, when we're talking, even talking to people about our God. We don't want to misrepresent this life to them, right? Because we don't want them to get, come in, get in the building and then storms, storms will happen, right? Because the storm, Jesus was in the boat with them, right? Storms still came, right? So we, can't, we don't want to misrepresent that. That's one thing, right? The second thing is, um, even when you, when you, when you um, become a Christian, you have to think about this. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Why don't you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3? Because even when we become a Christian, that's a lot, a lot of times when the storms really begin. Because that's when we come on, our, on the enemy's radar, amen? Right. Yeah. That's true. 2 Timothy chapter 3, you're going to start at verse 11. And it reads as follows. Let me get that first. Persecution, afflictions, which came up, and this is Paul talking. Persecution, afflictions, which came up to me in Antioch, and Echonema and Lystria, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. So that's one thing, right? We see that God delivered him from all his persecutions, right? But look, yea, 
all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. One translation is that all who desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. So we, notice what it didn't say, though. He didn't say all who successfully live godly and holy will suffer persecution. He said the desire to the desire, the desire to live godly, persecution will arise to desire to live godly in an unholy world, a godless world, so bring persecution alone. Before we get to anything else, he said the desire, the, or even the desire to live godly show brings persecution to you. Right? So that's why we can't misrepresent this life. So if you want to live godly, if you want to live a holy life in a dark, dying, wicked, ugly world, Jesus. you become a target. We have to expect that, right? Yeah. That's something we have to expect. We don't want to be ambushed by that. We have to expect that. Because if you want to live godly, you should be looking for the persecution. Yeah. Amen? He said it was going to come. And not you doing it, not 100% successful. The desire. Get this. Even the will to do it can bring persecution. Amen? Amen. Amen? And those of us who strive to do that know this is to be a truth. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Any of us who on our job, in our workplace, wherever it is, who suffered, who, who tried to live a holy life and do things what, the way God says to do it, we know this thing is true. Amen? Amen. Amen. You suffer persecution. Amen? Amen. We, must, we got to get to a point in our lives that our peace and our joy and our love for God comes independent of our circumstances, though. Right? right? Yeah. We, can't be, we can't be moved by what's going on. We can't be moved by the weather. Right. We can be cold one day and hot the next day. Amen. We, can't, we can't be moved by that because our lives are a living witness, right? Yeah. Our lives have to be a witness. So we can't be moved by what's going on around us, even in the storm. Yes. That's the key. Even in the storm when the sun is shining, everything is great. We know this already, right? I'm saying we can't be moved. We have to move. We have to live with our joy and our peace and our God independent of our circumstances. Thank you, Amen? Amen. We don't want to wait on it to feel good to praise our God. Amen. Amen. We don't want to wait, wait on it to, the sun to shine mm -hmm. to praise and worship our God. Amen. Amen. Because the sun may not shine for six months. Oh, then what? Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't forget about our God till the sun is shining. Yeah. So we got money in our pocket. Right? right? Did all this well in our homes? Are we going to wait? You can't wait. Because we have a guy who's worthy to be praised no matter where you are, no matter what you want, no matter where you find yourself in, or no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, right? He's worthy of that. Amen? Amen. Right? So, we don't have to wait till we come to church to get pumped up to praise and worship our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You and I already got to be a wonderful thing you do in your life. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because, um, just give you a story, quick story. My dad was a superhero to me when I was growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Because he would fight me. He would physically fight, right? So, but he was undefeated. I've never seen him lose a fight. So that, that brought a sense of confidence with me. When I'm at, so I'm seeing this, I'm like, no matter where we were at, I felt confident. Because he never lost. That I seen. So now, bring us into this faith walk. Right? So now, our conf my confidence comes with God now knowing that, look, even in the middle of a storm, Jesus is in the boat with me. Right? He's there with me, no matter what. So that, if, I, if I had that type that of confidence as a child in my dad, like, I know he'd be good. No matter where we are, what get up, we find ourselves in, we were good. Now I have a God who's greater than all things, who has all power. Right? And so I'm in the middle of a storm, but Jesus is in the boat with me. How much more confidence should we have with Jesus with us? No matter if we, if we, go, if we can come through the storm, great or not. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. God is good, ain't it? That's why when people, whenever people ask me, <clears throat> how you doing today, brother? My answer is always the same. God is good, bro. Yes. He's good. Because that's all that matters. Right. He's good. I know he's good. Because even if I might not be doing well at that particular moment, yeah. the fact remains, like I said, Jesus is with me yeah. in the middle of a storm. That's different than walking through this life without a savior, without a shield, without an umbrella, right? Without somebody who really loves you and proved 
his love to you by dying for you. Yeah. Huh? So that's why God is good. My response is usually God is good, brother. Because it doesn't matter how I might be doing this moment, this second, mm -hmm. today. Yeah. It matters. Because guess what? Yeah. What's the worst thing that can happen? Let's lay it all the way out. The worst possible scenario that can happen to the believer is you leave this earth prematurely and go be with God for eternity. Glory. If that's your worst case scenario yeah. for the believer, is you leave this life and go be with God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the absolute worst case scenario. We don't want to leave this earth, uh, earth early, but I'm saying if that is the worst thing that can happen to the believer, we're all right. Yeah. Right? If that's the absolute worst case scenario is that we leave this earth early. I feel, you know, our family's going to suffer, our family's going to feel pain. Yeah. We don't want that. No. But I'm going to be in the presence of my Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's why he said, you don't have to be in bondage to fear anymore. No, no matter what you're going through. Wow. And if that's the worst thing that can happen to you, that's the worst case scenario, then you have you need a couple of dollars and live as light. That's light work. Right? Your light means light work. Wow. You being without a job today, that's light work to a God who's infinitely powerful. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's the end game, we win. Amen? Amen? Because that's how good God is. I remember last week, Mr. Green preached a sermon. He said something like He said, if we begin thanking God for all he's done for us, we will never finish. I chewed on that all week. I chewed on that all week, brother. I'm like, wow. If we begin to thank God for all he's already done for us, we'll never get to the finish line of thanking God. And I think, but what's interesting is the only time, <laughs> the only time that we have short-term memory is when it comes to God. That's the only time we got short-term memory is when it comes to God. Amen? <laughs> if when folk do you wrong, you remember that you have photographic memory. <laughs> Amen? Some folks still mad when something happened in 85. <laughs> they can tell you the day the sun was shining yeah. or the storm was, you know, they can take everything that happened on that day. But when it comes to God, we got short-term memory. <laughs> right? And you woke up this morning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how short-term our memory is. Yeah. But he got here safe. Somebody died in the way to church today. Yeah. Right? You're here at 8 at o'clock service. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a miracle in itself. Glory to God, amen? But well, you're here, right? So or we have to have more than a short-term memory when it comes to our God. Amen? amen? We need to have a short-term memory when we come to folk that's wrong. That's because we want to be walking in love and forgiveness yes. with people. We don't want to have a photographic memory when it comes to people who've done us wrong. We want to have a photographic memory when it comes to our God and yes. what he's done for us. Yes. Right? And what he's doing for us. Yes. Right? Amen. Once again, you need to thank God for your next breath. Amen. You need to thank God for your last breath. Amen. Amen. When I talk about short term, that's what I'm talking about. For that, Lord, thank you for that last breath. I didn't deserve it. I was a fool at one time. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Jesus, y'all still with me? Yes. yes. Isaiah chapter 26, please. Start forgiving folks, too. Uh oh. That was 85. We still upset. He owed you $10 for 15 years. Every time you see him, you want to bite him. Isaiah chapter 26. Uh, is that what I meant? Oh, okay, I'm in the wrong scripture. I said, I don't know why you went crazy. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. I'm going to start there. Right? So look. Now this is God talking to Israel. He said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Now he didn't say, I will keep him in perfect peace those who visit me. Right? He said, whose mind is stayed on me. 
It might have to be stayed on God. Amen? Amen. Now, how does that happen? When, you're, when you believe, is the key, when you believe that your God is bigger than your problems. Amen. When you believe that, you can keep your mind stayed on him, which results in perfect peace. But only if you believe it. This is the key. You're not going to have perfect peace if you really don't believe that. Amen? Right? The truth is, he is bigger than your problems. This is the fact. God is bigger than your situation you find yourself in. He's bigger than my situation I find myself in, right? So I can keep my mind stayed on him, focused on him, focusing on the work that we have to do. We all have assignments, we have things that God has given us to do in this life. Amen. How do you do that? Yeah. When you're overwhelmed with thinking about our little storm. Yeah. And they are little when it comes to a big God. That's what I'm saying. When you believe that your God is bigger than your problems, you can keep your mind stayed and focused on him. Amen. You can move through this life the way you want you to move when you believe that. Yeah. Only if you believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Only if you believe it. Though. Yeah. That's the key. Everybody don't believe it. You have to believe that, right? Yeah. See, here's the thing, though. You can only believe it and all the other great stuff I just said if you have a living relationship with our God. Yeah. You have to have a living relationship with our God. That's the only thing, that's the only way any of this stuff is true to you. Right? right? If you have a living relationship with our God, everybody don't. Right? right. Everybody don't have that living relationship that will result in you being able to have the ability to keep your mind stayed on him. Right? You have to have that living and breathing relationship with this guy we're talking about. Amen? Amen. You don't want to have a, what I call a hearsay relationship, right? A lot of people have a hearsay relationship, right? Pastor Kimbrough loves God. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna love God through Pastor Kimbrough. That's a hearsay relationship. That's not gonna be effective. That's not gonna do you any good. Amen? That's not gonna do you any good is having that type of hearsay relationship that only comes from you knowing somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who loves God. That ain't gonna do you no good at all. What benefit is that of you, right? Or you can have an attendance relationship with God. I come to church regularly. That's it. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> right? Right? That's a dangerous thing to do. Because then you deceive in yourself. You think because of my attendance is great, my relationship with God is, is great. But the problem is, you have an attendance relationship with God, then a storm hit. Right? Then we see what's in you. Right? You go crazy. You're freaking out. At the smallest thing, because your relationship is built on either a hearsay, my pastor is a great with God, yeah. or I'm here every week. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'd rather miss every now and then and have a living relationship with God. Yeah. That's okay. yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because if I, if I miss, every, if miss, miss every now and then and have a living relationship with God, when the storm arrives, I'm good. Yeah. It only works that way. Amen? Amen? Nothing else is going to work in this life that we live in. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus. A living relationship. I need to get that into you. A living relationship with this God. You got to be able to have a living relationship with this God. Yes. Know Him. Yes. Right? Like He knows you. Yes. The only way this works, the only way you're going to have successful is success in this thing, right? Amen. Mm. God is good, ain't he? Yes. Yes. When you have that type of relationship with God, right? When you have that type of living relationship with God, you can start your week out by saying, Lord, I want this to be the most meaningful week I've ever had in my life. Yes, yes, yes. That's the only way you can say something like that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Then let's close it further. Lord, I want this to be the most meaningful day I've ever had in my life. Yes, yes. You got to start your day like that. On purpose. Start your day on purpose. Lord, I want this day to be the most meaningful day I've ever had in service to you. Yes. You have to mean that though, right? Yes. Folks say a lot of stuff, right? I'm saying it has to be something that you mean. And that only comes as a result of you having this living relationship with your God. Yes. 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 Right? Yes. No other way. Yes. No other way it doesn't happen by osmosis or nothing else. You have to be in the in the field. 
with our God. Amen? Amen. It's the only way it works. Right? Just think about our, our just, think, just think about our, our suffering. We have suffering brothers and sisters around the world, right? Yes. Who are endangered constantly because of their stance on Christ. Because they name the name of Jesus Christ. Because they are followers of Christ. Their lives are constantly in danger. They need us to pray for them. Yes. Right? They need, our, 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 need our, our constant prayer for these people, right? But if we're so consumed with our light bill, yes. right? Yes. How can we talk, how we, we, we can't pray for people properly, yes. right? If I'm so consumed about my little storm I'm in, excuse me, if somebody's life is in, very life is in jeopardy. Right. Amen? Amen? We haven't been pushed that far yet here. Amen? Amen. Well, our very lives are in danger because of our stance with our God, right? And if you don't have that living relationship I'm talking about, when they come to you and say, deny Christ, what do you think you're going to do? What do you do? Amen? Amen. Man, if you're someone like hearsay relationship, my grandma loved God, or my mom loved God, when they come, when your life is in jeopardy, right? When people depend on you sharing this gospel message, and they, they threaten to murder you, or martyr you for the name of Christ, what do you do? Can you stand there? How can you? You have to be honest with yourself. Right? I'm not talking about people in the crowd. I'm talking about be honest with yourself. You know exactly where you stand with God. You know what you do when you leave here. We know how your walk is. I'm saying if it's not where it should be, get it to that place. Lord, help me to make this, help, help me to have this type of loving relationship. This type of living relationship. Help me get there then, Lord. Amen. I need to get there. Because the day is going to come when it will be a crime to do what we're doing today. This is coming. We can't be naive about this. We can't just be church folk. Amen. We got to have to get deeper to that. At some point in our life, we have to get to a point of maturity where it got to be like, Lord, whatever, Lord. Whatever you say, Lord. Whatever. Whatever. Period. We want to get to that point, right? Where we can be fully used by our God. No matter what the circumstances is. Like I said, the worst case scenario, even if I'm first facing that type of persecution, is that you murder me, I go be with my God. Right? That's the kind of, that's the kind of mindset that they had around the world. That's the kind of relationship that they had with our God around the world. Their lives in jeopardy. Like, if you so what? You kill me and what? What if Paul, I don't know whether I, whether to stay or leave. I I I stay for your sake. I would rather go and be with Jesus. When that's the mindset, things get done on the earth. <laughs> Amen. 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 You stay. That's why we have to be passionate. About our God. Amen. Excited about our God. Yes. Passionate about the things of God. Yes. If you ain't excited about your God, then what gets you, what fires you up? Right? If you're not excited and fired up about our God, then what gets you there? What's exciting to you here? Football? <laughs> what is it? Right? If we can't come in here and shout and praise our praise the Lord, wave our hands, stomp our feet, wave the flag, whatever. You should wake up on fire before your feet hit the floor. You should be excited about our God. Amen. 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 What you living for then? Why we come here if that's the case? You can chill at the house, at the crib. Amen. You can be cool at home. Amen. God requires fire and dedication. But that comes from love. Amen. Amen. We gotta be excited. I think, I think about David, right? I love David. Listen, David was sent to uh, send supplies to the line for his brothers, right? He got to the line. This is why I love his brother. This is why I my brother's passion. He got to the line, right? And Goliath 
talking junk. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing that. But it's just a Goliath talking junk about the armies of the living God. David hear this immediately on fire. He was furious. David was. He said, what was it? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Coming against trying to defy the armies of the living God. What you talking about? Why are we sitting here? Why are y'all scared? We serve the living God. This is David's right, right? This is what I'm talking about. We're talking about having a couple of dollars in your pocket or not. Right? He said, Who is this dude? He said, Don't worry about it. I then look, look, he was battle tested though, right? Yeah. He was battle tested, right? He took the he, he killed the lion and the bear. Right? right? So here's the thing, though. So your last storm should prepare you for your next storm. Oh. Yeah. 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 Hey, brother, train. If you in the storm, praise the Lord. It's training ground for the next one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's why when he came before Goliath, he had, he had to fear less. He was without fear right. when he came before Goliath. Because he had already been through the storm of, of tearing them lions and bears up. He said, oh man, don't worry about this. I got you. They tried to put all this other extra stuff and armor on and saw his army and said, look, man, I can't do nothing. Let me do what I do, bro. Right? We see how that was. He told the lion, I'm going to take your head from you today. Right? He wasn't playing. We can't have that playing attitude either, though. Right? And while life is not in danger, so we definitely ever can't play with these little minor storms. And every storm is not minor, don't get me wrong, right? Every storm is not minor. But our God is well able to deliver you from whatever it is you're facing. Amen? Because right? think about um, in the book of Daniel, right? Ch third chapter of Daniel, right? He said, look. And I'm paraphrasing again, y'all. He said, look, I'm not going to bow down and serve no false gods. Because you king? Yeah. Why would I do that? He said, my God is well able well. to deliver me from your hands. Yeah. And this is why I love this. He said, but even if you don't. Right? It doesn't matter if you do. It's enough for me that he's able to do it. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. That's enough for me oh. is that he has the ability to do it. Yes. Right? Even if he don't, right? Yes. Even if he don't. Yes. Right? I'm in the storm and he decides not to deliver me out of the storm. Yes. The fact remains once again is he's in the boat with me. Yes. Right? So guess what? If the boat goes down, I'm going down with Jesus. Hear you? So I'm going to have confidence and trust in God, even if the boat is on its way and the, the, the water is sinking. I'm going to have confidence in God until I have no more breath in this body. Amen? Because then I can walk hand in hand in this life with Jesus. I'm walking with Jesus, brother. I'm holding the master's hand, brother. I can deal with whatever I face. Whatever I go through, I'm holding Jesus' hand. We just can't be scared and let hand go to something when it really gets when it get thick. No, oh, okay, let me take over. Right? This is our mentality sometimes, right? We want to take over, right? He said, no, nah, bro, you just relax. You relax. Yes. Right? Just put your faith and your trust in me. Right? You've seen me do this before. Everybody in here who's been saved longer than 24 hours have seen God move in their life before. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You've seen God deliver you from something. Set you free from something. Right? Heal you from something. Yes. We've yes. seen God move. Yes. Everybody in here who's seen God move, and even if you're not a believer yet, you've seen God move in your family member's life before. Yes. So you were without excuse either. Because God said, I healed them in front of you. Right? I've healed him in front of you. So you without excuse either. 
You've seen me work. You've seen how powerful I am. Yes. Right? Right. right? You've seen the Red Sea stand up. Right? Yes. right? Yes. You've seen us walk. We've seen I sit them walking through on dry land yes. in the middle of the Red Sea. You've wow. seen this. He left these things in the Bible for an example. Yes. Amen? Yes. We can't worry about a life storm. We can't be concerned about a life storm to the point of distraction. Even distraction. I'm not talking about worry. I'm talking about even to the point of distraction. Right? Because we have an enemy who wants to distract us from doing the work that God has called us to do. We, he, we have a great work. God's called us to do a great work here. Amen? Amen? Amen. He called us to have a, a great work. But we have to put our trust, our real trust, right? <laughs> our real trust in this God, right? In our Savior. In our King, yes. who's worthy to be praised and glorified. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. There's nothing like it. Yes. Once again, we have to believe that. We have to get to pass the song to the reality. Yes. Amen? Yes. We all sing the songs, but we have to get, make, it a reality, make it a real part of our life. Yes. Right? Yes. You can't just stop at the song. Praise and worship is just not a couple hours on Sundays here. If you just see a guy for a couple hours, we only hear a couple hours a week. Most of us, not pastor. <laughs> right? Most of us only hear a couple hours a week. So if I'm going to have a relationship with God for a four, three or four hours a week, brother, when a storm comes, bro, you might as well jump off the boat yourself. <laughs> right? If, you only, if your relationship is based upon a few hours that you're here a week, right? It starts when you leave here. Yeah. That's when you worship God the most. Yeah. When you leave here. Yeah. When you have to face that world who hates us. Right? That's when the work starts. That's when the battle begins. That's when you have to witness. We don't have to witness the people in here. They're here in the sermon every week. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. We have to do that when we leave the building. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory. I'm going to wrap a little too much because I can go. Um, but we just serve an awesome God. We have to serve an awesome God. Now, if, if anybody here that's facing something in their life, we have to see it as it really is. Amen. See it as it really is. And see our God as he really is. But that's the most important thing. Because you may have a huge, gigantic storm. Right? If somebody tells you you have cancer, that's a big storm. That's a huge storm. But our God is much much bigger. Yes, he is. Much bigger than any name you name, right? Cancer is a name, right? Sickness is a name, right? Yes. Uh, financial struggles is, a, is bigger than anything that we can name, right? So when you live in that place, when you live in that space, like I said, it's just training ground for the next one. Glory. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory.